Lane so can everybody see? Yeah. Okay, pretty good. So is the yeah. camera ready? Yes, ready. Can I start? Yes. yes. Okay, so uh, today I will talk to you about the Bose-Einstein condensation. Uh, it's a novel phase of matter and uh, it's at the cutting edge, edge of the modern science and technology. Um, it's a very exotic thing, exotic thing but um, eventually you will get it. So, um, first, you need to reach very cold temperatures to produce that state of matter. And I will first introduce how to produce that condensate and then talk about some details and why it matters. So first, you just get um, tons of like billions of sodium atoms. These are the atoms that is the same atoms that you have on your regular table salt. And then, um, as I said, you need to cool them. Uh, so there are several stages to cool them. First, um, we use the laser cooling. But as we know, uh, laser lasers are hot, right? As we know from Star Trek and Star Wars. But actually, it turns out that we can do something. And um, imagine that you're trying to stop a moving bowling ball with a bunch of ping pong balls. So if you hit them on head on the opposite directions, and if you hit a lot of ping pong atoms, eventually the bowling, the bowling ball will stop. <laughs> so that's the same thing. The atom is moving in this direction, and you apply a little shove in the opposite direction the atom is moving, and it kind of slows down. But that is not the end. So we need to cool it further. And uh, the third stage is the evaporative cooling. And evaporative cooling is not different than a coffee cup cooling. Because the, um, the coffee in your cup moves, uh, cools the same way uh, as the evaporative cooling. So um, to understand evaporative cooling, we need to understand what temperature is. So temperature is just the energy of atoms, the movement of atoms. So if some way we can um, uh, take away the atoms that are energetic, the remainder becomes cool. So the idea is like that. Um, we have a trap and there are a bunch of atoms in it. And atoms are jiggling in all directions. And there are like energetic atoms and less energetic atoms. The energetic atoms jiggle faster. Um, so if we reduce the width of a trap, then what happens? The atoms are jiggling. But if there is an energetic one that jiggles more than the others, since we decrease the level of the trap, it just leaves a trap. And uh, because the energetic ones Le uh, energetic ones left, the remainder becomes cooler. So this is the same thing that happens to your coffee or when you wash your head. Um, the energetic atoms just leave on your face, leave from your face, and the remainder, the, your face becomes cooler. So uh, having applied this, we reach the nano temperatures, and the, um, what happens to our material uh, can be seen in this little diagram. So we had a bunch of sodium atoms, they were hot and we applied the laser cooling, and our atoms shrink. And when we applied evaporative cooling and reach the right temperature, they um, completely change their phase and um, condense into a little spot. If you were to able to reach the zero Kelvin, the absolute zero, then they will be at the same spot. So they will condense and share the same physical state. So at that time, the atoms lose their individual identities and coalesce into a new state of matter called the Bose-Einstein condensate. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting that this is the coldest place in the universe. So mm -hmm. it's not the outer space, it's not Canada, or <laughs> so this is the coldest place in the universe. So if somebody asks you what, what, where is the coldest place in the universe, you can tell them the Jefferson Lab ground floor. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, but how cold it is? I mean, 100 nanokelvins doesn't make any sense to me. So it is just numbers. I know uh, how big it is, but it doesn't make sense to me. But I will try to explain. So how cold it is? So imagine we built a thermometer that reaches all the way from Earth to the Moon. Like a very big one. And if we calibrate it so that the zero is the Earth and the room temperature is at the Moon. So the temperatures we reach is just a width of a hair uh, away from the absolute zero. So that's cold. Um, but um, why do we do this? Right? Uh, apply several techniques, a um, bunch of technical work, a lot of money. Why it matters? 
So it turns out that the Bose-Einstein condensate um, opens a new way um, to explore fundamental questions in physics. It became a tool to probe new materials that are technologically important. I will give you the most uh, important example, the superconductors. So superconductors are basically materials in which the um, electricity, the electrons move without any resistance. But how come? You know, how, how they're related? So it turns out that the Bose-Einstein uh, condensate can be turned into a material called a superfluid. So superfluid is just like a superconductor. It's a fluid and it flows without a resistance, without a viscosity. So if we um, just make the fluid atoms charge, then it means that the moving thing, the electricity, flows without a dissipation. And superconductors are very important and uh, actually they can open a new era in the human um, civilization because if we um, were to able, uh, if we were able to create power lines, phone batteries, or computers out of superconductors, then it means that we will not use any energy. Uh, we will not uh, um, like dissipate energy to heat, so it will be 100% efficient, and it will be amazing thing. So um, the Bose-Einstein condensate uh, paves uh, the way for exploring such questions and create exotic materials that are important for the human civilization. So it is cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you.